Yeah, this is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through your 2018 Avenger by Primetime 26BH. Okay, I'm here on the door side, walking towards the back. So we have a uh, scissor type stabilizer jacks. Uh, these are operated with a crank. There's one jack on each corner, of course. And uh, you can use a three quarter inch socket on, a, on an electric drill, battery power drill. That's what most people do these days to raise them and lower them. All right. You have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers, a mount for a TV, antenna out for a TV, and uh, a place to plug your TV in or anything else you need to plug in out here. Okay. Let me walk past here. You've got pass, almost pass through storage. It actually is, but you just have to access half of it from each side. Two 20 pound tanks. There's your LP regulator. Um, a deep cycle marine battery. The other half of your storage. Uh, there's your crank for the jacks, and that's a reducer for your 30 amp uh, power cord so you can plug it in at home if you need to. Just remember, if you reduce this down to a 15 amp uh, plug, you can't really run the air conditioner because it'll pop a circuit breaker, but you can run everything else, no problem. All right, so there's two ways to get water to your trailer. The most common way is right here, the city water connection. So you're just gonna hook your hose up there, turn it on and it pressurizes, excuse me, pressurizes your whole trailer, you're ready to go. Um, now, if you happen to go to a a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, uh, let's some like some of the older state parks, for example, you would fill your tank either before you get there or at you know state parks will have a fill station at by the gate, for example, and you'll fill your uh, onboard fresh water tank right there, and then you can use the pump inside to uh, to uh, pressurize your water. So uh, the electric pump will will. Uh, Feed all the uh, feed the shower and the toilet and the sink and everything, so it works just like you have city water. Okay, I went a long way to tell you that, but I got there anyway. So, all right. So these are your dump valves here. Okay. Let's see, if they're closed. All right, so they're closed. So you've got the black dump valve, which is toilet, water, and waste, uh, and then you got the gray, which is sink and shower water. So you're gonna hook your hose under here. You're gonna pull the black valve. And then after that dumps, you're gonna pull the gray valve. The reason you do the gray second is because it's cleaner water than the black water, that's all. Um, just helps to clean up the hose. Now, after you do that, you'll close your, your gray valve, leaving your black valve open still. You'll come up here and you'll hook your hose to the black tank flush right here. You turn on the water and it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean it out even better. But you always wanna have the black valve down there open while you do that because you don't want too much pressure to build up, okay? All righty. Uh, that's your service panel for your refrigerator. You don't need to go in there except for service. This is your cable or satellite through, just a coax through to the entertainment area. That's an outside shower and sprayer. This is the outside of your water heater. Um, it's uh, The switches to operate it are inside. You can run it on gas or electric. Um, there's the drain plug there, just so you know. That's where you drain it. I'll show you the switches once we get inside. I'm gonna close this for you so I can do it. One handed. Okay. Uh, this housing up here, it's just showing that it's, this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you wanna add a backup camera, it has to be a, a Furion camera that fits into that housing. We do sell them here. You can talk to our parts people if you're interested. Either way, if you get one, wherever you get it from, it has to be the one that fits into that housing, all right? Also, while we're looking up, you have to inspect your roof three times a year. I figure once in the spring, once in the, in the fall, and then once in the middle of the summer, you go up on the roof and look at all the sealant, make sure that it's everything's nice and tight, there's no cracking, no uh, uh, separation starting. Sometime, some year when you go up there, you're gonna see it, some uh, separation, and you're gonna have to get it taken care of, so do that immediately, because you wanna keep it nice and dry inside. Okay, so let's go inside. All right, here we go. So this is for your power awning right here. Let me back up so you can see where we're at here. There's the door, there's the 
This is for your power awning. So you're just going to send it out like so. Um, you don't have to, uh, uh, or I mean, excuse me, you have to hold your finger on the button and you hold it till the, you can see the awning tube basically. Once it's all unraveled or unrolled, you can see the awning tube. That's when you stop, you know you're all the way out, okay? Never leave it out unattended. Uh, when you leave the campsite, roll it in because the wind can whip up underneath it really quickly and uh, cause damage. There's your awning with your LED strip on. Okay. This is your thermostat over here. Okay. Uh, it's just an analog thermostat. You're going to go from off, right is heat, all the way to left is cool. Second from the left is fan, which is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. So, um, it just circulates air. Uh, also, try to keep it on auto, the fan part on auto when you're using it. It's the best way to go. All right. While I'm in the bedroom here, you have a mount for a TV, obviously, and then you have uh, antenna and uh, power. Now, this is the emergency window here to escape through if you need to. Uh, so, basically, what you're going to do is if you want to use it just for um, let me get this through here. Just for, um, I'm going to have to set this down for a second. Hold on. Okay. All right. I see they put a, a larger screw through there, so I, I'm just going to have to explain to you because I'm going to fix this before you get here anyway. It should be fixed correctly. Uh, you obviously can't have a window where you, that you can't put the push it all the way through that thing there. That's ridiculous. So that's going to be fixed for you. So the bottom line is we'll push all the way through and then if you need to escape you will pull this uh, red tab and pull the screen out and out you go. So let me deal with that issue here in a minute. Okay. Sorry about that but at least we caught it. Sink works like any other sink. The oven and stove, you just spark to light. So you're gonna turn on a burner. I don't know if we got gas on here, but let me see. Yeah, the gas is on. You just you just turn the sparker to the right clockwise and it'll light. The oven, which looks like it's never ever been used, which is not uncommon in trailers, you see it all the time. This one sparks. I just wanted to make sure that it did actually spark. Some you have to light, some will spark. This one sparks. So you'll go over here to the oven knob and you go to the, the flame, which means pilot light. You'll push it in and depress it and hold it there. Keep holding it. Then you're going to spark it here until the pilot under, light under there lights. Once it lights, you're still holding this in and you continue to hold it for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. Then you'll go to whatever operating temperature you want and it'll cycle like a regular oven. But when you go back to off, the flame obviously goes off, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time before you uh, use it. This is the power converter. This converts AC to DC power. So it takes 110 AC, regular household current, which you see right here. You have regular household circuit breakers and it's labeled. Things like the air conditioner or the microwave have to run on AC current. Um, so it that's where that happens but then it converts power down to 12 volt DC on this side and you see you have regular automotive style fuses here and they're all marked um, and this handles everything that runs on DC power so um, if any of these were to blow which is rare they shouldn't really blow unless there's something wrong with the appliance but if they do they'll actually light up and you can see them glowing through this plastic here um, so you'll know also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery has, and it'll keep it charged. If it needs a lot of energy, it'll send uh, 10 amps or 15 amps, whatever. If it's, if it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple, but it'll keep it charged as long as you're plugged into shore power. This is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like this. Uh, you can set it off so you can hear it. It'll go through two self-tests. One more coming up. And then back to green. It should always be green. If it goes off, you want to uh, take you, yourself and your family and friends outside, uh, shut off the gas at the, at the tanks and figure out what's going on, okay? And if it's not green, you get it serviced or replaced. It's very important. Okay, your refrigerator is a Dometic, Americana style. It was a gas absorption refrigerator, so therefore you can run it on 110 AC 
or power or you can run it on LP gas. So basically you turn it on here. Right now it's on auto. You can switch it from gas to auto. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because it's automatically going to switch over if you, let's say you lose power in the middle of the night, it'll automatically switch over to gas for you. Uh, it always seeks out gas, or excuse me, always seeks out electricity when you're on auto. Um, now, if you want to just dedicate it to gas, you can go this way and just turn it on gas. If this check light comes on, it means it, it faulted, it did not light, meaning there is usually still air in the line that hadn't been pushed through yet. So then you just shut it off and turn it back on and let it make three more attempts to light because it makes three attempts each time you start it. That, that, then it'll light for sure at that point. It almost always lights the first time, but it, on a rare occasion, maybe you have to do it twice. But uh, the bottom line is, generally speaking, you want it on auto. All right, so this is your um, water pump here. So I told you you have your onboard tank. If you don't have city water at the campground, you can pump your water right there. You also use that for winterizing. Um, you check your tank levels here. You can see the gray tank is, is empty. You can see just the, the bottom light lit up. It graduates up in one third increments till they're full. Black tank is empty. Fresh water has a little bit in it because we're water testing it. Um, so once you get past two thirds with the black and the gray tank, you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping it, okay? That's just a, a plug with a GFCI. All the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside are wired through this GFCI. So if it pops, you're gonna reset it here. This is for your water heater. You light it on electric here. You light it on gas here. And you, you um, always make sure you have water in the water heater tank before you light it, it on gas or electric, okay? Otherwise you'll, you'll do damage to it and you'll have to get it repaired. So make sure it's got water in the tank. The sink in the, in the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower. The toilet, the bottom line is, you have to have water and chemical in it to start using it. So what you'll do is you'll get to the campground, you'll hook up your water and your power. You'll come in here, you'll take your toilet chemical, whichever kind you're gonna use. You're gonna put one dose in there. Then you're gonna step on it and it's gonna dump the, uh, ant, or the um, the chemical into the toilet black tank and then start adding water. So you're going to stand on that till about two gallons of water go in there, a gallon, two gallons, somewhere in there. You can't tell exactly what that is. It's not necessary. The bottom line is you got to have a little bit of water in there to use it and chemical. You never start off using it dry. So then you just use it like a normal toilet, a flush it this way. But if you were to stay on the same campsite, for example, and you had to dump it, uh, the the uh, black tank, you would dump it, then you would come back in, and if you're going to stay there, you'd repeat the procedure. you put more chemical in, and a gallon or two of water, and you're all set. Um, also, if you want to fill this up fuller before you use it, you'll just push down on this pedal just a little bit, and you can see water will come out, but the trap doesn't open, so it'll fill up as full as you want. you got to do that each time before you, you use it. Okay? And you have a vent and a fan. You should run that fan with the shower to pull the humidity out because these things are built really tight. So keep in mind you have to, uh, if you don't know this, you may know all this, I don't know, uh, but you have to um, winterize the trailer and before you pump any antifreeze into the system you have to bypass the water heater. That's something you'll have to educate yourself on a bit or else have it done. But you never allow antifreeze to get into the water heater tank or to leave a really foul taste and a foul smell that won't go away. So they give you valves on the back of it to bypass. So you'll have to learn a bit about that or else have it done. Or maybe you already know it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, and last here, just about last, is, is your sound here. And it's got disc players here, CDs and DVDs. Uh, you can stream off this USB right here. It has two zones. One is inside, two is outside speakers. You have, um, and you can hook up with Bluetooth, so you can uh, hook up wirelessly and play your MP3s off your phone or your tablet over your system. Uh, you can put, uh, you know, all your favorite albums on one little USB stick and take them with you and plug it in there. Okay, and of course this is your TV, which works like any other TV. All right. Okay, so let me look around, make sure I'm not missing anything. I think I've got it covered. Okay, I'm looking, looking, looking. This is a, a vent, obviously, fan and light. Okay, the microwave works like any other microwave. And the couch jackknifes flat. So you just pull it this way, the bottom out, and it'll jackknife flat. So you can use it as another bed. The, this table is the same thing. You take the pull, two poles out, lay the 
top onto these cleats down here and fill in the space with the cushions and you got another bed there. So we're doing good there. So, okay, I think we've got it now. Um, let me look around. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we've got it. Okay, so I want to thank you very much for purchasing from National RV Detroit. And if you have questions, you can call us and we'll work you through it and we'll, we'll uh, help you in any way we can. Thank you very much.